It's a common misconception uh, in the flooring world that an old concrete slab that may have had other flooring down on it before, like BCT or carpet or other types of flooring, it's been down for 20, 30 years. Um, it's maybe even longer, 40 years, 50 years, and then uh, they want a new floor. All right, it's reached the end of its life. They want something new. And the thought is, is like an old slab, if this floor has been down for this long without an issue, or an apparent issue, then okay, fine, you can just go right over it again. That's a really dangerous uh, game to play. Old concrete um, may not be designed uh, up to the codes today, such as vapor retarders, for example. Some of the old slabs like that, they either didn't have a vapor retarder under indirect contact with the slab, or they were inefficient, um, or not basically not good enough. Um, a lot of the old slabs were, and even, even some are being done today with just six mil a six mil poly that goes underneath the concrete slab. That's really not a good enough vapor retarder to protect the future floorings that you put down on top, right? Um, new concrete slabs um, need to be thoroughly analyzed as well. A stable and predictable slab um, has two, two aspects involved with it. Number one, the concrete design, how it was designed. Does it have an effective vapor retarder or vapor barrier in direct contact with the base of the concrete? That's one part. Um, if it doesn't have an adequate vapor barrier or vapor retarder, then it's very difficult to claim that as a stable slab. It's the, the purpose of that vapor retarder underneath the concrete, um, and vapor barriers are really popular now. Um, 15 mil vapor barriers are being used under slabs. Um, is it, it helps to prevent um, outside sources of water getting up into the slab after the concrete's already poured. When we, uh, it, that could happen from a number of reasons. Um, poor drainage, um, other issues where water can actually get back, be reintroduced in the slab, and we don't want that to happen. That all comes down directly to the design and construction of the concrete itself. Now, the other part of that is moisture testing prior to an installation. Doing the moisture testing on a concrete slab per the ASTM recommendations gives you values of what the water content is, so what's, hap what, what's the static condition of that concrete right there. Um, you can have dynamic issues as well. So in the, in when you're trying to analyze whether a slab is predictable or not, you have to look at the construction elements and you have to take a look at the testing that's being done to it. So moisture testing and reporting is part of the analysis of a project prior to the installation of a flooring system, okay? It's very important that the data collected from the testing is accurate. Um, I've seen too many times where the testing was actually done incorrectly. Now, if they're done incorrectly, you're going to get false information, right? And now you're basing your installation whether you can proceed or you need to move in an alternative route, right? You have to, you're making choices based on that data. And if that data is incorrect, you can, make a, you can make, make a really big mistake, right? Which can be a problem later on down the road. Um, the reporting aspect is so very important also. Um, I've, I've seen test reports come through where they were very incomplete. Um, each of the ASTMs that govern the various types of moisture testing that we have, we have calcium chloride test, we have the in-situ probe test, um, and there's others. Um, they do have some requirements in there. Um, calcium chloride testing, for example, um, will ask you um, within the recommendation is to follow the temperature and humidity of that space. There's, a per, there's parameters for each, and those parameters, if it goes out of bounds of that, then you may, be, you may be performing the testing correctly, therefore you can get a different result. And it may be a result that tells you, hey, I can do the floor, when really you shouldn't, as, as prescribed by the installation system. So the reporting is equally as important as the moisture testing itself, that combined is, is one part, one part of the multiple parts of how to analyze a concrete job. It wasn't too long ago that we did not have uh, testing or certification in, in the country, in the U.S. or Canada. Now there is. The ICRI um, has uh, training, very good training, um, and accreditation for, for performing those tests. It's very important that any contractor um, that, that is doing the testing on their own, that they do seek out the training and certification. Um, interesting, we have an ASTM uh, called ASTM F710. It has a lot of different components in there, but basically it's the standard practice of, of 
preparing a concrete slab to receive resilient floor covering. There's a lot of stuff that's covered in there. It talks about VAT abatement, it talks about joints and cracks, it talks about moving joints, non-moving joints, it talks about vapor retarders, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really valuable, valuable document and every flooring contractor that does commercial work should have that. Um, it does talk about joints and cracks and other un unpredictabilities that are, also, that are also part of the analysis of a concrete slab. We've already talked about, is it new concrete, is it old concrete? Um, does it have an effective vapor barrier or vapor retarder? That's one part. Moisture testing, uh, pH testing also is another part. And then also taking a look at the concrete for the joints and cracks, whether they're moving, non-moving, so forth and so on. It needs to be understood that flooring contractor's obligation for doing floor prep is that the floor patching materials that are being used, whether it's a patching material, skimming material, or even a self-leveler, they shouldn't be considered permanent structural repairs to the concrete. You're basically skimming or smoothing or leveling um, to cosmetically correct the slab well enough so it can receive a, res a resilient floor covering.